Sherlock Holmes and the Shaggy Dog There once was a very wealthy man who had done more things in his lifetime than most people could do in ten. Not only had he started poor and made an extremely large fortune, but he did it also again and again in completely different types of businesses. He had climbed all ten of the world's highest mountain peaks. Annapurna 1, Nanga Parabat, Mansula, Daragari, Choyo, Makula, Changchenjunga, Latsu, K2, and of course Mount Everest. He had climbed the highest peaks on every continent in the world. He circumnavigated the world by himself, single-handing a sailboat through the highest waves and worst storms. He had won many triathlons, marathons, and had traveled to every country in the world. He had beautiful wives and mistresses and outlived them all, not to mention having acquired everything the super wealthy would want to own. In short, he had done and acquired everything his giant ambitions pulled into his exceptional mind and focus. Except one thing. One. He was now a very old and used up man, his mortal coil unraveling. His intoxication with life was slipping away. He knew he wouldn't live much longer. He thought that perhaps if he could accomplish his one last wish, he may be able to pass on satisfied. He had sent a servant to summons the world's greatest detective, Sherlock Holmes, offering a large sum of money to come to his bedside within the day. The next day, Holmes appeared, chewing on his Gordash Calabash pipe, Examining the incredible size and detail of the ornate castle, he noted the scratches around the keyhole of the servant's quarters area and knew the butler had a drinking problem. The maid had the tips of her well-polished shoes lightly worn, and he deduced that she rode horses and the markings were from stirrups. He meticulously noted dozens of things about the building and those who built it. He noted things about the staff in the castle, the owner, and deduced much from the decorations, the awards, the trophies, and the books. His mind gathered facts as he walked into the parlor and waited to be escorted to the owner. An impeccably dressed doorman walked in and bid the detective to follow him. As they approached the huge and beautifully carved twin doors of the master bedroom, the detective and the doorman walked to the door. After a knock, the servant bid them to enter. The detective walked past several servants across the sprawling bedroom to an immense bed with an almost expired old man. The old man bid him to come closer. The detective leaned in to hear the old man. The old man said in a very weak breath, Sir, I have lived long and accomplished everything in this life I set out to. I have one last wish in this life. If you accept this task, you must work with great haste, as my mortal coil is nearly unwound. If you succeed while I am still in this world, I will pay you a princely sum. If you fail, I will still have you paid, but only one-tenth the amount of money. Holmes paused and said, What is the task, sir? I accept it now as a matter of honor, so long as it does not violate my moral creed. The old man wheezed. I want, uh, I, I want, I want, I want a shaggy dog, not, not any shaggy dog, but the shaggiest dog in the world. The detective was taken back. It was not at all what he was expecting. After recovering in a moment, he asked the old man to repeat the statement. Then the detective stated solemnly, it will be done, sir. I assure you, sir, I will not return with a shaggy dog but with the shaggiest dog in the world, faster than any other. The detective was given a large briefcase stuffed with British pounds and departed. He headed immediately for the British Library in London. There, in a matter of hours, he became an expert on shaggy dogs, breeders, and the parts of the world where he might find the dog he sought. He knew he would have to seek out a rare breed within the breed of Commodores, He contacted a renowned breeder in Hungary, who would be the most likely to have or know where he could find the shaggiest dog in the world. He then immediately departed London for the Putzas of Hungary and the Pannonian Steppe. The game was afoot. Holmes made it to the Hungarian Steppe in record time. 
As good fortune would have it, when he met the breeder, he also walked into a meeting of all the top Commodore breeders at his farm. He asked and was granted a few moments to address them all. The detective stood up in front of them and said, I am here on the last wish of a dying old man. His last wish is to own the shaggiest dog in the world. I found that the Commodore is the breed, and if there is a place to find the shaggiest dog in the world, it is here with you gentlemen. Please tell me, who would own this dog? said the detective. All the breeders' faces turned towards Jorn, the most famous specialty breeder on the steps. Jorn smiled confidently. He knew he had the dog. I do have this dog, said Jorn. I will not sell it. How much do you want for it? I will ask only once. Then I'll be on my way. I would rather disappoint the old man on his deathbed than return with a lesser dog, as it is my honor to do so. I have no time to barter. Jorn hesitated and then blurted out a very large number. Everyone stood in stunned silence. The detective responded, Would you take British pounds? Jorn was stunned. Yes, he said now smiling. Show me the dog, and if it meets the requirements, I will pay you. Within an hour, Jorn returned with an unbelievably shaggy dog. It had to be the shaggiest dog in the world. The detective pulled on the fur to make sure he wasn't being swindled. The detective then opened a large briefcase and paid Djorn as gasps were heard. The detective now had only enough money to return with the dog and departed. Even faster than getting to Hungary, he returned to the immense castle in England. The detective deduced the old man must still be alive as there were no signs of unusual activity. He went to the massive doors and was greeted by an astonished staff as they pushed in to see the shaggy dog, the shaggiest dog in the world. Holmes and the dog were, again, led to the bedroom of the old man. The doors opened, and the old man was being propped up in bed by a pair of servants so he could see the dog. He looked astonished. Good, good lord, y you succeeded. Please bring him here so, so I can see him clearly. The detective and the dog slowly walked to the old man on the bed. The old man frailly reached out to touch the dog and to pull its hair. The smile passed from his face, and he looked up at Holmes. Indeed, I, I do believe you found the shaggiest dog in the world, and... <clears throat> he stammered. It is wholly unsatisfying. The old man paused and then said, Meh, and died. <laughs>